body, Ben Gothard here, founder and CEO of Gothard Enterprises and author of CEO at 20, A Little Book for Big Dreams. And today I want to talk about networking. Um, specifically, I want to talk about what the worst thing that could possibly happen uh, with networking, right? Because I feel like a lot of people have the stigma uh, of networking where it's really... Um, you know, it's really scary, or they can't do it, or they're afraid something bad's going to happen. Uh, but, you know, if you, if you really think about it and, and you really dig down to the core of what networking is, you know, like what is it, it's really not that bad, right? I mean, networking at its core is just building a relationship with another human being and, and connecting with another human being on, you know, any sort of level, right? And so the purpose of networking and the benefits of networking, of, of meeting people, going out and talking to people, those are in, you know, in, invaluable. It is an invaluable skill to be able to go out and talk to people and build relationships with them um, because you never know who it is that you're talking to. You never know who it is that you're building a relationship with that someday you may be able to help them, you may be able to provide value to them, uh, and, and they may eventually be able to pro provide value back to you, right? So I, I, I take it that you all understand the importance of networking, right? But I specifically want to talk about, uh, about the fear part of networking because I feel like a lot of people, they, they have that fear, right? And, and it's fear that's preventing us from networking. And from doing the things that we want to do, right? So, so let's talk about it, right? What is the worst thing that could possibly happen? If, if you go out and you, you try to network and you put yourself out there and you go talk to people, like what is actually the worst thing that could happen, right? Now, there are a few ways to, to come about this. Now, the first way that I want to talk about is going somewhere where you may not, uh, you know, be, you, you may not supposed to, you may be in a situation where you should not be there, right? Uh, you, you probably shouldn't be in that situation, right? And, and that could be crashing a party that you weren't invited to or going to some company event that you don't work there, right? Well, if you do that, then you're setting yourself up to have a potentially worse consequence than what should happen, right? Because like all networking is is talking to people, and, and it's talking to another human being and, and relating to another human, human being. But, you know, if you're going to crash a party or you're going to some work event that you don't even work there, like clearly there can be things that can happen to you, right? They might call security on you, whatever. But I want to talk about real networking. I want to talk about a place where you're actually, you know, you're supposed to be. You know, it's not like a private event that you're not supposed to be in there. But it's, a, it's an event where you actually are allowed to be there, right? It's you're, you're totally within your legal means to be there. Let's talk about the worst thing that can happen. Okay, so so the first thing that I wanted to talk about is when you walk up to somebody and you start talking to them, right? Well, what can happen? They don't want to talk to you. Okay, so what? Who cares? There there are plenty of times when people have probably approached you when you haven't wanted to talk to them. You didn't call the cops on them. You didn't do anything that was, you know, harmful to them. You were just like, hey, I don't really want to talk to you right now. Maybe later. Or you just said, please don't talk to me, right? And, and yeah, it could be a little bit embarrassing to be told, stop talking to me. But that's just what it is. It's, the, it's a game, right? It's, it's being able to put your ego aside and go up to somebody and try to build a real relationship, right? So... You know, let's say that you are at, I don't know, a, a dinner party, and you went with a few friends, and let's say that you wanted to go up and talk to this gentleman who had a really cool suit on, right? I mean, he just had an awesome suit on. And so you go up to him, and you start talking to him, and lo and behold, he does not want to talk to you. He's not wanting anything to do with you because he, he's interested in going and doing whatever else he has on his mind. Okay. Okay. You spent five to ten seconds going to say hi and realizing that he does not want to talk to you. Okay. Disengage. It's, it's as easy as that, right? So it doesn't have to be like a crash and burn situation. It's really not always going to be bad, 
right? And, and you know, a lot of people always focus on the negatives of, ne of networking. You know, what if I fail? What if it doesn't happen? What if it doesn't work? Right? Well, think of the positives, right? And, and I actually eventually want to make a follow-up video talking about the possibilities of what could happen when you're networking. Right, but again, this video I want to focus on what's the worst thing that can happen. Okay, so so somebody may not talk to you. Okay, who cares? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if if one if you know five out of every ten people don't want to talk to you. That's just how it is. Right, you're not going to get along with everybody. Not everybody's going to be a good fit for you. You may be doing the exact same thing as somebody else, and you know, they're, they're direct competition. You may not want to chat with them. That's fine. You're not going to get along with everybody. That's just how it works, right? And so when you're networking, don't get discouraged by that stuff, right? Like, like there will be people who you just don't get along with. It's, it's human nature. There may be people who you talk to them for a little while and you find that you don't enjoy being in a conversation with them. Okay, that's totally fine. You can just walk away, right? I mean, nothing bad is going to happen to you. In fact, the more you go about doing this, the more you try and try, you're going to see that some of the time, sometimes it's just not going to work. Sometimes people just don't want to talk to you. They, <laughs> they don't want to hear anything about it, right? So that's fine, right? Who cares? Okay, so, so that's the first point. And I want to end this first point of they may just not want to talk to you and that's fine by saying by, by giving you a quote uh, by a gentleman of the name George Ross, who is actually one of the founding fathers of the United States of America. And he said, to be successful, you have to relate to people. They have to be satisfied with your personality to be able to do business with you and to build a relationship with mutual trust. Okay, great. So if you if you are trying to relate to people to be successful and you're trying to be satisfied with their personality just as much as they're being satisfied with yours and, and you can build that relationship and establish that mutual trust then it starts with networking going to talk to them going to build that relationship and you know what it sometimes isn't gonna work out I mean think of think of it in terms of this right if you're a marketer if you're an entrepreneur Think of it in terms of this. Let's say you bring 100 people onto your website to try to buy a certain product. Well, not all 100 of them are going to buy. In fact, I would say if you're really good, maybe 5% of them will buy. If you're sending traffic from, let's say, Facebook to your website, maybe, maybe 5% of them will buy. It's cold traffic, right? Well, think about that in terms of networking. Out of every 10 people that you talk to, you could probably get five people to actually talk to you and one out of those five people to actually build a connection with, to build a relationship with, that's that's still a 10% hit rate. That is awesome, right? And, and again, it's not always about the quantity of relationships that you build, but, but sometimes it's about the quality of them, right? And I'll give you an example. A really good friend of mine, Chris Jones, he and I have been you know, friends since probably last November, December, and I'm super pumped to talk to him all the time and to just, you know, see how he's doing and, and you know, catch up with him, and, you know, we, we spend a lot of time going back and forth and chatting, and it's fun, right, and, and not everybody that I've reached out to has turned into uh, you know, Chris and I's relationship, like, like, I see him like a brother, like, he's like my older brother, you know, I, I invited him to, to come to New Orleans, uh, to stay with me for, like, a few weeks, and, like, he, he's somebody that I had never met before, like, last November or October, and just the fact that we both have spent the time networking with each other and building that relationship. Now there's trust. You know, I trust him to come into my home. I, I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy to have him as a guest. So that, you know, that just shows you the power of networking. And, and I just want to give that little personal anecdote. But if I hadn't been able to overcome that fear to actually reach out to people and, and try to talk to them, I may never have met Chris. I probably wouldn't. He lives in Wales. You know, he, he's just not somebody that I would routinely see living in Louisiana, 
in, in living in uh, New Orleans, right? So I just think it's really important that we kind of put it in perspective, right? The worst thing that can happen is, you know, what? What's the worst thing that can happen? Somebody doesn't talk to you? Somebody ignores you? Okay, who cares? The best thing that can happen? You, I mean, there are so many things. You could have a new friend. You could have a new business partner. You could have a new employee. You could have a new uh, lead, a new sale. There's so many positive things that can come out of networking. The thought of being stricken by fear, it is It is not worth it is not worth being stricken with fear. It's not worth being paralyzed by fear to the point where you can't go network. Okay, so so the first point that I want to make, what's the worst thing that can happen to you? One, they just don't talk to you. Okay? Two, like nobody's going to arrest you for saying hello. Okay? And, and I want you to really think about that, right? Just because you go up to somebody and you say, hi, my name is insert name here, right? Hi, my name's Ben. Nobody is gonna take offense to that. Nobody's gonna call the cops on me. Nobody's gonna, you know, try to arrest me for just saying hello, right? Especially if you've done your homework and you're going to an event that is a networking event, right? Like if I just randomly approach people in the grocery store, I, it, that would be a little weird, Right? I, I wouldn't do that because I recognize how weird it is. Now, by the same vein, if I'm going to, let's say, a workshop for other entrepreneurs, you bet your ass I'm going to be saying hello to every single person that I can. I'm going to be passing out business cards, trying to get people's contact information, trying to build relationships because, you know, I, that, that's the whole reason for the event. That's the whole reason why I'm going there is to go and meet people and, you know, maybe learn a thing or two, but it's the relationships that are key. It's the relationships that are truly key, right? So, so the first point, they may not want to talk to you. Who cares, right? Almost anything that can happen when you're trying to network, who cares? As long as you're not doing anything illegal, who cares, right? The, the second point is that nobody is going to, like, bring down this hammer of justice on you for trying to get to say hello. Right? And, and if they do, if you have had that experience, please come talk to me about it. I would love to hear that experience. I would love to talk through it with you. And I want to I wanna know what caused that hammer to be dropped down. Because it's probably, it probably wasn't the networking in and of itself that was the issue. It was potentially the approach or the way in which the networking was conducted. Right? And, and there are many different situations for that. Anyways, I digress. I want to I want to give you another quote, and this quote um, is is by Jeanette Rankin, who was the first woman to serve in the United States Congress, and uh, and and she said, "You take people as far as they will go, not as far as you would like them to go." Okay, and I think that's a really important concept when talking about networking and and especially fear of networking, right? Imagine how afraid you may be to go talk to somebody at an event or in public or to, you know, to try to build a relationship with somebody. Okay, put yourself in their shoes. If they're not talking to anybody, they're probably just as afraid to do that, right? And so if you take the time to go reach out to them and build a relationship with them, not only are you at an advantage because you have tackled your fear first, right? They're just as afraid as you. You're tackling your fear. You're going to say hi to them, right? That's powerful. That's palpable. They're going to remember you for that. But also, it's important to remember once you do start networking, don't try to push people too far, right? Because some people may be comfortable talking, you know, small talk. Um, you know, so, so don't ever think of networking as how far can I push this? right? At least in my opinion, I would recommend against that. Because what what happens is when you try to just push, 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 then people are like, whoa, like that's too much for me. It's a little bit abrasive. And then they kind of back off, right? And so, you know, I think Rankin has a really good point when she said, you know, try to feel the situation, only take people as far as, as they want to go, as they're willing to go, 
right? Because then you're staying within their comfort zone. They feel comfortable with you. You're building trust. You didn't push the limit. You didn't step over that boundary. And when you respect people's boundaries like that, networking just becomes, hey, I'm just talking to another person. I'm just, I'm just talking to another human being, right? I mean, you, you, chances are you talk to people every single day, right? And true, most of these people are probably people that you already know, but a lot of people in the beginning don't know that many people, right? And that's fine. How do you expect to meet people? You got to go say hi. You got you to gotta get over the fear and, and just jump into it, right? And the more you do it, the better it's going to be, the easier it's going to get. And so, you know, nobody is going to bring down the hammer on you for trying to network, trying to say hi. And if they do, they probably aren't somebody that you want to be networking with in the, in the first place, right? Because, again, networking is supposed to be mutually beneficial. I'm interested in what you're doing. You're interested in what I'm doing. We can share our thoughts, share our opinions. Maybe we can help each other out further down the road, right? So, so that's, that's basically my second point. Uh, is that nobody's really nobody's going to bring down a hammer on you for saying hi for networking, right? So, so what are the worst two things that could happen? The two things that we talked about are they don't want to talk to you, or they bring down this this you know theoretical magical hammer that just you know like what's going to happen? They they're not gonna like strike you down. It's not it's not going to be that serious either. They want to talk to you, they don't. Great. Either way, it's fine. Right, so I want to I want to move to my third point, which is that you are absolutely, absolutely one hundred percent going to be shot down. You're going to be told no. You're going to be ignored, and you're going to be rejected. Right. Not only is that a possibility of what is the worst thing that can happen, but that is an absolute fact. You're going to be told no. You're going to be shot down. You're going to be rejected. Right. And you know what? That is okay. That is totally okay, right? You're not going to be 100%. If you are, that's awesome. Kudos to you. Share your secrets, please, because you, you know better than I do. But it's okay to like go and talk to somebody and have them say, sorry, dude, I'm just not interested, right? Especially if you're in sales or you're in marketing or something like that. You can't be afraid of that. You can't be afraid of people saying no because they're going to say no, right? And you know there are two quotes that I wanna I wanna share with you on this subject specifically about people saying no. The first is, and I've heard this from many different entrepreneurs. And I think it's brilliant. Is that no does not always mean no. It just means not yet, right? So so somebody just may not be in the right mindset to want to consume the message that you're portraying, or they just may not be in the right place to talk to you or to to engage in meaningful conversation you know they, they may be in their head they may be dealing with something you never know what people are going through so yeah it could be a no right now but it could be a not yet and it may be a no forever but you don't know right and so unless you keep trying keep going back and and you know approaching the situation correctly just because somebody said no once doesn't mean a week later or something you you may not be able to say hi and, and rekindle that right so so that's the first quote that I wanted to, to give you is that a no isn't always a no. Sometimes it's a not yet, right? And and the second one uh, is a quote by Steve Maraboli, who is a best-selling author and a keynote speaker. And he actually says something quite profound. He says, every time I thought I was being rejected from something good, I was actually being redirected to something better. Now, I love that quote. I think that quote is very, very powerful, right? Because in that situation where every time you're rejected, you're not just being shot down, you're just being redirected to something better, think about how powerful that is. You can't lose, right? So the person that you were trying to talk to, they don't want to talk. That's fine. That wasn't the best path for you anyways. Go, go find a different path. Go find another person to talk to. Find another person to build a relationship with, right? Because you and your time are very valuable, right? And, and when you think about that, when you think about, hey, my time is valuable too. And the people that I associate myself with, I'm, I'm not saying that you're gracing them with your presence. That, that's a little bit much, right? But, but realize that if you're going to be putting forth effort to have a conversation with somebody and to communicate with somebody and build a relationship with them, then wouldn't you want that in return? I know I would, and I know I do. And so 
you know, if people don't want to connect and they don't want to talk, great, that's fine. You know, do your own thing. Well, maybe we talk later. But but don't ever let that deter you from trying to start the conversation in the first place. And and that's kind of the core of the message today is that fear should never, ever, ever be a reason not to go network. Right? Because again, what is the worst thing that can happen? Right? You're gonna they don't want to talk to you, you're gonna be ignored, you're gonna be rejected. Who cares? First of all, who cares? Second of all, it's going to happen. You might as well get used to it, figure out how to deal with it, and move forward, right? And, and again, nobody is going to bring down this, this magical hammer and smite you. Like It's, it's not going to happen, right? So I challenge you to try to get out of your comfort zone. Go, go talk to the person you've been meaning to talk to. You know, if, if you're a guy... And, you know, there's a there's a, a cute girl that you've been wanting to talk to. Go talk to them. Go say hi. See how they're doing. If, if it's somebody who is in the business world, you know, you're trying to you're trying to get a new lead. Go say hi. Don't don't just sell. Don't force it down their throat. Say hi. Build a relationship. So, you know, I just want to wrap up uh, by saying that networking is a great tool. Uh, and again, it's a tool that I encourage you to use. And it is a skill to use that tool, right? So I encourage you to try to sharpen that axe. Get out there. Go try to network. It's not as bad as you think. And the more you do it, the better you're going to get, right? So good luck with your networking, everybody. Um, uh, this has been Ben, uh, and I mean, you guys know who I am. Y'all have fun.